Sergei Tidov is one of the most controversial developers that you've never heard of. In fact, if you recognize his name, it's almost certainly because you were negatively affected, and that's such a strange thing in the gaming industry. There are many names that we know. John Romero, Peter Molyneux, Sid Meier's, Hideo Kojima. And in almost every case, the reason we know their name in the first place is because they create incredible universes, wonderful stories, or innovative new genres. However, if you know Sergei Tyler, Tidov's name, it's probably because you think he's a scam artist. The War Z, Infestation Survivor Stories, Shattered Skies, Romero's Aftermath, Last Man Standing, Burst Fire, Wild West Online. This is not a randomly selected list of the world's worst games, but in fact, the list of games that Sergei Tidov is connected to. And I say connected to because, well, there's a whole lot of obfuscation going on here. Connections are hidden, rarely does Tidov come out and admit he's a part of the team or an investor and the goal is always the same make as much money as possible and then disappear into the darkness and the darkness is deep Tidov's history is shrouded in darkness he was at one point a programmer and director with several other companies including a technical director credit on League of Legends and was labeled a key person in a development studio called Stellar Stone, which released a few games you might have heard of. Taxi Racer, Gettysburg Civil War Battles, and Big Rigs Over the Road Racing. Let's talk about what the actual speedrun process for this game is, because it's real stupid. Okay. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. Okay. So, I go into the custom race, I pick the last track, I play the entire thing backwards because there's no speed limit when you go in reverse in this game. Yep. Once I beat that level, I go to each successive one, and every time I load up one of those stages, it just immediately flips to the you win screen or your winner. And then when I get to the last stage, the game crashes. Yes. <laughs> That is it. That is the process. This is all basically. It seems Mr. Tynov started his career of very bad games very early, as Big Rigs is semi-universally considered to be one of the worst games ever made. It's the worst game ever made. And I've played a lot. What is this? Episode 118? So that is a big statement, but I'm dead more serious. Why would you buy this abomination? We're not gonna give it a score, it doesn't deserve one. Superman 64 is a much better game than Big Rigs Over the Road Racing. Big Rigs Over the Road Racing? More like Big Rigs Through the Road Racing. The first year out of 10 ever given, Big Rigs Over the Road Racing. Uh, if, if, if one were to have a, this isn't a game <laughs> ranking on your game review scale, yeah. This would probably be the one to get it. After Stellar Stone went out of business, Sergei decided to strike out on his own and create a game called The War Inc. Battle Zone. This game doesn't exist anymore. It's pretty hard to even find information about it, but Sergei Tidov was responsible for it. It was one of the first free to play first person shooters on Steam, released in 2011, and it made some interesting claims with regards to features such as night missions, destructible light sources, 64 players, diverse game modes, large-scale maps, and a deep-rooted customization feature. Unfortunately for us, there's nothing left but a few videos on the internet. The War Inc., however, seems to have continued living in the War Z, at least partially in name and, well, appearance. And this is when Sergei Tidov makes an appearance for the first and last time, at least openly. The Stellar more, Stone. Yeah, Stellar Stone, Game Mill. Stellar. I, I want to say that they made something after that. One of the guys that was attached to Big Rigs had something that was in early access that went sideways. Oh, I could be remembering that, that wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, he, exactly. Isn't that too. that awful Daisy type I game? Think, yes. That, I want to say that got that, a that, lot of negative coverage. I want to say that, that was in dude. fact the game. Yeah. Right. The War Z, of course, another entry on many people's worst games of all times list, was incredibly broken, a basic and blatant ripoff of Daisy, and showed off a Steam page that was filled with lies. Just open, bold-faced lies about the content in the game. In response to the lies, the anger, and the controversies, of which there were many, 
The War Z's name was changed to Infestation Survivor Stories. And we'll unravel what Sergei says happened here in a little bit. Next is Romero's Aftermath, and if you think it looks the same, you're absolutely right. Also released the same day as Romero's Aftermath is Burst Fire, which admittedly doesn't look like The War Inc. or The War Z, but does look exactly like Rainbow Six Siege, but, you know, jankier. In a stroke of very good luck, though, Burst Fire came out right around Rainbow Six Siege's release. Funny, huh? The following year, you'd get Shattered Skies, an MMO that is, well, it's the War Z again. The one major change here, well, you have tiers when you purchase the game. The lowest tier gives you the game and some inventory space, and higher tiers give you more inventory space. If that sounds a lot like Escape from Tarkov, you're absolutely right, because that is the system that Tarkov stole from Sergei. Fun fact. Two more to go. Last Man Standing was released in 2017, and this time, we're ripping off PUBG, again with the War Z engine. In a stroke of very good luck, Last Man Standing came out right around PUBG's release as well. And finally, Wild West Online. This is Red Dead Online, and with some very good luck, was released around the same time that Red Dead came out on consoles. But unfortunately, it's just the War Z on horses now. You can already see the trend here. Take the War Z, make a game that's basically the same as some other AAA game with lots of excitement around it, and release it around the same time. It doesn't matter if it's good, or if it's complete, or if it does anything at all, as long as it successfully takes your money. The closest comparison really might be those films that are released around the same times as major blockbusters. Atlantic Rim, What's Up, Paranormal Entity, Chopkick Panda. Sergei Tidov is the mockbuster of gaming. Tidov, though, doesn't like this characterization. He has plenty of excuses for each and every complaint. The War Z? Well, that game was a failure because the management team was made up of himself and four others, and everyone got a vote. But those other four were bean counters. They just wanted to make as much money as possible, not make a good game. That's why he changed the name of his company afterwards, because in actuality, he closed that company and started a new one that didn't have the same management. That allowed him to do all the voting and get things done right. If that sounds confusing, it's just because he had to arrange things in a way that protected him. Romero's Aftermath? A spiritual successor that tried to do what the War Z couldn't, and that's why it was free even. It's exactly what it was meant to be, but he got slammed because of the War Z's problems, which, remember, weren't his fault. Burst Fire? Oh, he was just attached to that. He didn't have anything specifically to do with it. That's why it was under a different company name. Shattered Skies? Well, it actually had mostly good reviews, so clearly he was doing the right thing, and it's only gone now because it couldn't maintain the player base. Last Man Standing just couldn't compete with PUBG and Fortnite. Who could? Wild West Online? Well, he wasn't even involved at all. He just owns all the rights to the engine, and there's a lot of evidence. He was totally involved, but it's fine. He's not. Also, now the game is free to play, and there's a Battle Royale mode, and the company has disappeared into the darkness. So it's exactly like every other company that Sergey's been involved with. So yeah. The man's a scam artist. He's admitted that he rips games off for profit. He's admitted that he isn't a talented programmer. And he's not a particularly experienced manager, and so his games would never have taken off on their own. The problem with this kind of excuse is that his games did take off. The War Z, Infestation, Survivor Stories, Infestation, The New Z, whatever name change you want to think of it as, it sold almost 3 million copies. And that's with pricing between $10 and $20 with sales. It's not unreasonable to assume this game made tens of millions of dollars. And I can't help but feel like maybe if that money was spent on creating a fantastic title instead of just disappearing into the ether, well, maybe we'd have a game people look back on like they look at 
at Fortnite, a game that started out as a co-op base builder, or No Man's Sky, which started out as absolutely nothing and became a game several years later. Today, maybe we'd be talking about the incredible story arc of Sergei Tidov. A man who left Riot Games and a history of working on titles like Big Rigs and forged his own path. And though it was rocky, he would eventually create something worth playing. But no. All of these games have some sort of potential. You go back and look through them, there are fans for each. There's people who lament that they were shut down or abandoned. Sergei had a chance to make a niche cult following and he squandered it for short-term financial gain. I'm certainly not a psychic, but it's really hard to imagine that he would have done worse if he'd cared. Did you play any of Sergei's games? Is he on your list of worst games? Let me know in the comments below. Please consider sharing this video because it really helps, but feel free not to. If you'd like to watch another video, there's one in the corner right now, and as always, we'll see you on the next one.